Hi, this is Caroline from The Happy Sensitive. And in this video, I wanted to chat with you a little bit about how I healed my gluten sensitivity, which is great because gluten sensitivity is so incredibly annoying. Um, if you have one, then you know, like gluten is in almost everything. It doesn't have to be in everything, but it's used in all kinds of sauces, sauces, soups, any kind of crust, any kind of crunchy crust. There's usually gluten in there and all kinds of products that really don't need any gluten per se will often have it. So if you have a gluten sensitivity, you'll be looking for all kinds of products that are rice based or just, you know, avoiding any kind of grains as much as possible. And you know, it's doable, it's doable at home and it's doable in your own grocery shopping once you know where to get everything. But especially if you ever want to eat out, it's just, it's, it's a nightmare because a lot of people don't really know what gluten is and some restaurants, they lie about it because they just want to sell you the meal. So yeah, it's a hassle. And I had a gluten sensitivity for I think about seven years or so. And I want to be clear up front that I had a gluten sensitivity not a gluten allergy, right? So that's a different thing. So if you have a gluten allergy, then the smallest, smallest speck of gluten can create all kinds of symptoms. So people with a gluten allergy, they have to uh, take special precautions. And if in somebody in a restaurant is using a knife to cut bread with, they have to use a new clean knife to cut your gluten-free bread Otherwise you get symptoms, right? So that's, that's really the difference with a gluten sensitivity. I, d I didn't have to have those kinds of precautions taken. So I could have a meal with other people who were eating, eating gluten just fine. If there was like tiny, tiny, tiny speck of gluten somewhere, it wasn't really a problem. So that did make it easier. And I also want to say that up front because, uh, I think, I don't know, I haven't had it, but since I had a gluten sensitivity and sensitivities are a little they're less extreme than a gluten allergy. Uh, I don't want you to take what I'm saying as proof that the same would work for uh, your, if you have a gluten allergy, uh, which obviously I hope you don't, but um, yeah. So there's two things actually that helped me. And uh, I do want to say I would try to see if I, if I could eat gluten again once in a while but let's specify once in a while because I talked to someone once who would try eating gluten every month or so and then get all kinds of symptoms and that's like way too often. If you want to try if you can have gluten again, if you have a gluten sensitivity, like for me I would try it maybe once a year or once every two years and I would you know make sure I hadn't eaten, eaten anything else that could possibly affect my digestion. I would take a piece of bread, try to eat you know eat it, wait see what would happen. And you know, for many years, what would happen is I would get a really, really strong reaction right away in my gut. Um, my throat would feel all like painful, very like right away. So I knew this isn't working. Um, but then something interesting happened last summer. Uh, there's some things I've been doing. I've been doing emotional healing and trauma work on my gut specifically because for many, many, many years, that whole area was just cold and numb. Like my gut was cold and numb and I could feel there was like parts of it that almost felt frozen. They were like really cold if you touched them. So I knew something wasn't right, but I didn't feel any pain there. It was just numb, right? So I knew, technically I knew, whoa, there's some dissociation from whatever's going on in there. I can't quite access it. I can't quite feel it. So obviously something is wrong. Now, a lot of people think if you don't feel anything wrong, <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you don't feel any pain, things are good. But actually, if if you're if an area of your body is really numb or cold or you don't feel anything, that is not a good sign. That's not a sign that it's healthy. It's a it's a sign that whatever's going on there has gotten so bad that your body just kind of cut off the communication and said, "Well, this is just hurting too much. We'll just try to ignore it and hope the problem goes away," which obviously doesn't. Um, it doesn't just go away by itself. So I, I worked really hard to kind of connect back in with that area and try to feel what was happening in there. And a lot of what was happening in there were old stored emotions. And there was also a lot of energy in there from other people. And there were also all kinds of connections with psychic narcissists happening in there. So there was a lot of energy healing work that I did on that area. Um, but that was not the only thing. 
The second thing I did is I, I wrote an article last year about protein powders. I did a whole testing series on different kinds of protein powders. And there were a few in there that had probiotics in them. And so for quite a while, I took like once or twice a day, I had protein shakes with probiotics in them. And I think the combination of the energy work and the healing work where I was able to start feeling my gut better, I was able to feel what was going on in there. I was able to clear out a lot of um, old traumatic stuff and just get more in touch with that part of my body. And then combining that with really high nutritional value shakes with pro and prebiotics in there. I think that combo really did it because I started the protein shake somewhere in May and in August of that year, I was on holiday and I, I had a cup of tea somewhere and there was a little cookie with it. And I'd been biking really far and I was actually really, really exhausted and I needed a little boost to something. And that cookie would have been perfect except, you know, there was obviously gluten in it. And for some reason I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna have the cookie and see what happens. So I had, it was a tiny cookie, I had the cookie and I was fine. And I was like, huh, this is interesting. Um, and I didn't dare trust it yet. Cause I thought, what if I have like a relayed bad reaction? You know, like you're, you, you learn to get very cautious with these kinds of things. Um, but over the coming weeks, every once in a while, I'd have a little bit of gluten, something here, left, right. And I would notice like nothing. I didn't have a physical reaction anymore to the gluten. Like it would just digest it just fine. And I've actually waited almost a year to make this video to make sure that I actually don't have a gluten sensitivity anymore because part of me was thinking, maybe, maybe I just have some delayed reaction and I'm gonna find out later that, oh, I actually can't have gluten, but I just didn't notice. But the, you know, cause I was thinking maybe the symptoms are more subtle now and they start building back to a problematic level over time, but it's been fine. So I still hold on to some of my old non-gluten habits because you know, there's a lot of foods I started eating that I, that I had to eat because I couldn't have gluten. Some of those foods are just better. You know, they're better than what I was eating before. So I'm holding on to those new habits. But the great thing is, I mean, I'm someone who really, really loves freshly baked bread and it's something I couldn't have for years. So I've been eating bread and things like fresh pasta and it's been totally fine. So this is really amazing. Um, and I wanted to share this video because, you know, I know when I had gluten sensitivity, I didn't really hear any healing stories from people. It was like everyone who had it seemed to just, you know, stabilize or get worse. And um, I think what was going on with me was in part, that whole area was emotionally just overwhelmed and stuck and hurting, especially the psychic narcissism connections. And you can read more about that on my blog, but those are really draining on the body and they're really painful and they can, they really, really affect you physically as well. And I think that was a big part of it energetically. And then I think over time, it got to a point where that part of my body got so stressed and out of balance and just weakened that I developed some kind of leaky gut syndrome, um, which would explain why I used to be able to eat gluten and then at some point I wasn't anymore. Now it might've been that gluten was never great for me, I don't know, but you know, compared to what I had when I had gluten sensitivity, like the few times I tried to eat gluten, I would get a really violent, painful reaction right away and um, I didn't used to have that, you know, when I was younger. So I've been thinking about that. I was like, why is it that I've been able to eat gluten my whole life and then suddenly I'm not? Like, maybe gluten isn't the best for you, but still this seems really strange that it suddenly shifted. So I think for me it was, you know, a buildup of stress, a buildup of all kinds of unhealthy energetic crap. And then that kind of maybe conspired also with some viruses and things to create an environment where my, just my whole digestive system got out of, out of whack and it just needed extra support to heal. So then having gotten all the kind of emotional or not maybe not all, but most of the emotional trauma out and combining that with just daily supplements essentially, essentially because the, pro, uh, the protein powders I was taking, they're basically healthy supplements in many ways. Um, and I'd experimented with supplements before, but usually if you go to a practitioner and you ask, you know, and they test for supplements that might help you, at least the practitioners I went to, they always work with pills. And the problem is, 
If you have a gut that isn't working well, that's not digesting your food as good as it should, then taking a pill with some kind of minerals and vitamins in it is not going to digest as well either. So my experience with those pills was they didn't really do anything for me. However, when I started taking the protein shakes, that digested really, really well. And of course I took special care to select the ones that digested well for me. And so I, I think what happened is my body was able to use those additional minerals and vitamins and probiotics and prebiotics and really use them to heal. So there's that combo of, you know, the emotional healing, you know, like getting all the stressors out basically of that area and then adding in the supportive healing nutrients. I really think that fixed it. Um, so yeah, like if you, I would say like for, if you have something and you didn't used to have that problem, but now you can't digest it anymore. Um, I would say from my experience, there's hope, you know, but it took, it took a long time for me. And I think looking back, I might've been able to heal it more quickly, but some of the energy healing work, I had to learn to do that from scratch and I had to learn a lot. So there's no way I could have really sped that up. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it's really helpful to see it as an imbalance, especially if it kind of started, started over time. You were not born with it. It's not something that you discovered early on. You seem to be fine with these foods when you were younger and now suddenly you're not. It could very well be there's a lot going on in your gut that where emotional healing in a combo with the right supplementation can really do a lot to, um, to heal it. And I know for me, I mean, it took patience. There's many times I would have wanted, I wanted to be able to eat gluten again. Also for travel, right? I was thinking, gosh, if I, if I want to travel, what I would do if I traveled someplace, I would actually take gluten-free muesli with me, you know, to hotels and things. Um, and you know, just, and I'm by, um, for a while I couldn't even have yogurt and then for a while I could. So when I could have yogurt, I'd have buy yogurt locally. And I also, when I couldn't have yogurt, I'd have it with like hot water, which was not great, but it was food. Um, but I had to do all these kind of gymnastics to be able to go places, take food with me. I could never just buy a sandwich on the road because, you know, it's really hard to buy, to get gluten-free stuff when you're, when you're traveling places and you kind of have to know which restaurants to go to. And, you know, you really have to search and, and kind of plan for it. So that's really great that I don't have to do that anymore. And um, interestingly, I had a lot of foods that I was sensitive to. One of the other ones was plain white sugar. And I can actually eat that again now as well. But the, what's interesting here is that with the gluten, I really, really missed it. I really missed fresh bread. I really, really missed it. And I really wanted to eat fresh bread. Whereas with the sugar, I don't really miss the things that I, that I used to eat. Like I don't miss, I don't miss cookies. I don't miss cake. I don't miss all that kind of stuff. So, um, I think there's an interesting kind of intuitive difference there where I really think that white sugar is not good for anybody anyway. And it's definitely not, so, not good for me. So it's nice that I can have it again. So if somebody offers me a cookie, I can just take the cookie without wondering and worrying what's in it. Right. Um, but for myself, I still don't buy any white sugar products and I don't go and buy cookies and cakes and stuff like that because I just really feel I'm better off without it and I don't miss it. Like I'm fine. Like after seven years of not having something, you will know, <laughs> you know, if you really like need it or not, or if you're just used to having it. Um, but the bread is different. So I think there's an interesting difference there. Like if there are things that some things you, you, you learn to do without. And the people around you are like, how could you not have this thing? How could you not eat this thing? And, oh, it must be so hard for you. And you're like, nah, it's fine. Like, I really don't care. But then there's going to be other things where you're still like, you still wish you could eat it. And I think, I don't have any research to bear this out, but I think that might be an indication that actually that is a thing that could be healed and that could be healthy for you. It's just that you have some kind of block right now. That means you cannot have it right now because something is wrong. So... Uh, yeah, I wanted to share this good news. I hope that if, you know, if you're listening to this and you've been struggling with food sensitivities and you're wondering, you know, what is it that you can do? I mean, either way, emotional healing work in combination with like healthy supplementation. In my case, I re really recommend protein shakes. It worked really well for me, may not 
I don't maybe you don't, you don't like them or it doesn't work for you that well, but I would at least recommend trying it because it's it's a, it's a food, it's easy to have a healthy version of it with a lot of um, good stuff in it without having to like remember to take pills. Plus, you know, like I said, the pills don't digest as well when you have digestive issues. So I think that combo is worth trying anyway, just a combo of supplementation and working on emotional stuff in your gut and realizing that there's so much that we store in our gut, so much old stuff that we push away at the time because it's too, tra too traumatic and too overwhelming and we don't know what to do with it. It ends up in your gut and your gut is also in terms of intuition and feeling things can be very intuitive and can be very intuitively overwhelmed as well. There might be all kinds of energies in there that are not even yours and all of that can really affect your digestion. So when you work on these two levels, the energy and emotional healing and physical supplementation, I mean, it's worth seeing where that can get you. And of course, if you still have a reaction to certain foods, don't eat them, you know, like it's not worth it. Don't put yourself through that. And don't try to eat foods that you react to too often because then what happens is you end up um, kind of like overloading and stressing your system out. So, you know, I've heard from people who would try to eat something every month that they couldn't have just to see if they could already have it. And then what you're doing is you're just kind of adding to the burden, right? Like it's too often. So if you want to try stuff, you really need to give your body time to just like relax and reset and just kind of try to heal without this triggering food. And then maybe once a year see, maybe I can have it now because if you have a reaction and you can't really deal with it well, it's going to take a few days for your system to calm down. Your body's going to have to recover from this food that you were not able to digest and that you had a reaction to. And so you don't want to do that very often. You want to really just pace it. Um, but yeah, there's hope. <laughs> there's hope. And uh, yeah, life is so much easier when you can just eat gluten. It is so much easier. You know, I don't have to tell everybody like, oh, what are you going to make and what's going to be in it? And because people don't know what gluten is and people don't know what's, what things have gluten in it. So very often, even if somebody knows, and you tell them I can't have gluten, they'll still give you things with gluten in it without realizing it has gluten in it. They're not, you know, they just don't know. So, um, all right. So that's, that's what I, that's what I wanted to share. Um, if you'd like help with kind of the emotional side of things and the energy side of things, you think um, maybe there's a lot going on in your gut that this, you know, this would be worth looking at, set up a clarity call with me so we can talk and we can see what's going on for you. And I can use my intuition and my reading tools and skills to help see what might be going on in there that we can address. All right. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.